Hey there STFA, this is Chris Bowen, your hacker mod, here to do a video tutorial for one of Ricky's new designs, and uh, this one is for a peeker, which is a design that goes on top of a hood for a hooded towel. So stay tuned. All right, let's get started. So first thing you're gonna need is a cutout template, of your uh, pattern, your design, so that you can place it on your towel. Let's set that aside. You need uh, the stitch sheet, and the way that I print this is I print it so that um, both the design and the stitch order uh, print on one page. And you can change that in your printer settings uh, on my machine, on my printer. All I need to do is uh, change the number of pages per sheet of paper to two. Um, it does print smaller, so you might need reading glasses like I do, um, but this is essential for me to keep organized. What I do is I list over on one side of the stitch column, uh, the, the uh, step column, uh, what that particular um, uh, color stop is going to do. So for example, on the first one, it's going to stitch out this, the light red of the ribbon. And then on the second one, it's going to do the shading on that ribbon. And then it's going to do the outline for your applique because this is an applique pattern. Um, and so on and so forth. So I go ahead and list out what it's going to do so that I know what to expect. And since I don't use the same uh, thread brand as Ricky does when she designs it, I usually will write the color that I'm going to use over on uh, the other side. And so this for me is essential. You can also use this to write notes. If you did one and you didn't like the way you, something happened or you forgot to do something, you can write reminders on your paper. So I use these and I actually keep these in a notebook um, for later when I do when I do the stitch out again. And it's super helpful so that I don't have to remember as my brain gets older uh, what I <clears throat> what I did and what I learned from that particular experience. Um, so for this design, you will need a hand towel or um, some people like to use a full bath towel and then cut the bath towel end to the right size that they like to use. So it's totally up to you, but I like using a hand towel because it already has a finished edge on it. And you are gonna need a bath towel. For this one, we're doing a white hood with a blue uh, uh, bath towel. Going to need our tapey tape. A variety of scissors for whatever you might need them for. I also may need some pins here and there to hold the, uh, the towel into the hoop along with the tapey tape. I also like to have um, some spray adhesive. I like 505. Um, on the white hoodie, I won't be able to see this, so I'll probably use pins if I need to mark something. Um, but if you're using a different color hoodie, a uh, hood, a uh, towel for your hood, um, you can use a regular marking pen. I do have a pink one of these, but I found that when I use the pink one, the mark doesn't come out. So um, some cases, if you're, you know, applicating over your mark, then that would be okay. But for, um, for other designs, you don't want to use that because I can't get the darn thing to come out. All right, um, you may or may not need a ruler, so I just have that handy. Um, you will need the material that you are going to applique. So for this particular uh, one that we're doing right now, I am going to use marine vinyl. Um, and yes, I know white vinyl is the devil, but you know, I'm going to try it out anyway. Um, but if you decide you don't want to use vinyl, you can use other material. Just want to make sure that if it's like a, a woven cotton, that you put interfacing, uh, uh, woven interfacing on the back. I have uh, SF-101 on the back of this uh, piece of white. And you can still kind of see through it. I don't know if you can see the lines through it. Um, but you still can kind of see through it. But the, but the woven on the back helps with that. And of course, you are going to need oops, your hoop 
that is already uh, that is ready to go with your cutaway stabilizer in it. Um, I am going to do this one on my my ten needle, but you can also do this on your single needle, and it's it's no problem. Um, I am going to show you a a trick that I learned while doing hoodies, and that will also call for a piece of scrap tearaway uh, stabilizer. But since this is terry cloth on a towel, you will also need some of the filmy uh, wash away uh, stabilizer as well. This particular one is the end of a roll of Sulky, and so I am uh, Sulky Salvi, sorry, that's what it's called. And um, I am going to use this as a towel topper so that um, any stitches don't sink in. And it makes it easier to cut around the applique when you've got this on there. And it's a barrier between your uh, scissors and uh, it's a barrier between the fabric or vinyl that you're appliqueing and the loopiness of the towel. Because trying to run a scissor around an applique on loopy fabric like this is going to be very difficult. So this helps act as a barrier. Okay, so the first thing to do is make sure that your, your stabilizer is hooped. Um, and as my tip, remember I said when you are doing um, a, a work on a towel that your scissors can get hung up. There, I am going to put a little bit of tear away on top of my cutaway. Now, tear away shouldn't be used as your base because Ricky's designs are, are designed so that uh, they're designed using medium weight tear away, uh, cutaway. Um, but when you put a piece of tear away between the cutaway stabilizer and the towel, when you go to trim the design out in the end after it's all stitched, um, the tear away acts the same way as the water soluble did as a barrier between your um, stitching uh, between your uh, cutaway and the towel, so that you don't catch the loops of the terry cloth as you are cutting around the design. So. I learned this and I found it very uh, easy, so I thought I would pass that on. So, because uh, some people may not have a scanner on their their uh, machines, uh, what I like to do is before I get started, I go ahead and put the hoop in the machine with just the stabilizer on and uh, do a basting box with the design. So uh, most machines have the ability to add a basting box with when you load the design. And it's just a you know really large stitch box and it's just to kind of decide where the placement is. Because I, I do this because when we are doing this version of the towel topper, you're gonna place the edge, which is a finished edge, um, where the basting box is because if you were to say you wanted the design to be close to the edge but you put the edge of your towel all the way up to the edge of the hoop your design may end up way back here and that might not be where you want it so if you put the basting box in first on the stabilizer you can better place where you want that towel to be so let's say the design stitches right here or where is my paper. So let's say the design is set in the middle like it normally would be. Um, you can put your basting box there and know exactly where to lay your towel so that the design stitches where you want it to be. Okay, so I am going to go stitch my basting box and I will be right back. All right, we've got the basting box stitched out on our hoop. And now we are going to find the center of our towel. And if you would like, you can put a pin 
in the center so that it helps you line it up down here so that I know that that's the center. And I can decide whoops, from here, I really am trying not to hit the camera, but inevitably I end up doing that. So you can decide from here how far from the edge of your finished uh, hand towel uh, do you want the design? Do you want it right up to the edge or do you want a little bit of space in between? So let's just say I want kind of uh, something in between. I'm going to use that pin and I probably should have put the pin in this way instead. I'm going to use that pin as my center guide and I am going to place this. That looks fairly even spacing between the edge of the the uh, hoop and the top of the towel and then I am going to shush it a little bit with some spray because anything helps and let's do this side a little shush and make sure that gets placed all right so we know that that's the center, so I can take my pin out. Um, I also like to, since I'm floating this towel, and I know it's not as heavy as like a hoodie was, um, I'm still going to put a little bit of, uh, a, I'm gonna add a little bit of extra security so it doesn't slide around on me and put a pin uh, in each side of the hoop, just because I don't want that to move. And these pins I'm putting outside of the stitch path. So you can see once I have this design on here, it's going to be completely out of line. So there's no chance in it, in it hitting. Um, if you want to put even more pins in, like around the bottom, you can do that as well. All right. And so now it's time for my water-soluble stabilizer. And I am going to lay this down and use a little bit of tapey tape to secure it. When I did this last time, uh, my tape, my uh, water soluble came loose from, from the uh, tape and it uh, flipped over onto my design. So that didn't help a whole lot. Um, and the tape isn't gonna hold onto the towel back here on this end, so I'm just gonna throw a pin in here as well. All right, so this is all ready to go in the machine and we are gonna go ahead and run color stops one, two, and three. So that's gonna get us the red ribbon here on the side, the contour or the shading of the red ribbon and the outline for our um, applique. So I'm gonna go run that and I will be right back. And we are back. So we've got our die line for the vinyl uh, placement, and we've got our little ribbon stitched out on here. You can see that the light kind of reflects off of the WSS. So I'll just look that up. All right. So now I am going to place my vinyl, and this is a kind of a big piece, but it should work. Uh, make sure that whatever you use for your applique is completely covering the die line. You don't want to come up short. I have a tendency sometimes to try to play chicken with my vinyl and I have paid the price for it in the past. So I don't want that to happen today. And I'm going to go ahead and tape this to my uh, WSS and to my hoop so that it doesn't shift. And I will be right back with the uh, cut line stitched out. So that is color stop number four, the applique tack down. And we're back and it's time to cut out our vinyl. And so you can see that is a nice, um, nice 
stitch line or cut line for us to do that. What you'll notice on uh, the majority of Ricky's designs where there's applique involved is the cut line will be a zigzag. And that zigzag is really a tiny zigzag that go that will fit underneath the satin stitching. Um, and it allows you to uh, make sure that that's tacked down good, uh, really well. Um, I'm going to use my little scissors because when I'm cutting in a five by seven hoop, I really like, I have a hard time with the bigger scissors getting in there and maneuvering. So I really like my, um, Kai. These are Kai double, um, double curve, um, applique scissors. But if you feel comfortable, you can definitely use your duck bills or another kind of scissors that you have that is your favorite. So remember when you are um, cutting your applique or cutting anything to turn your project, not your hand. Not, uh, don't try to get into really weird positions. That I find myself getting into a lot. And there is a difference between um, applique trimming the vinyl versus applique trimming a piece of cotton woven. You can get way closer to the stitch line with cotton woven than you can with um, the marine vinyl. Um, so you have to be really deliberate in cutting. And you'll notice that with the WSS down there, I'm not catching all of the tiny loops from the from the towel and go slow because you really don't want to cut your zigzag stitching, but you want to get as close as you possibly can to the stitching, especially when you are using vinyl. And um, you may ask is, we know that these towel towels are going to go through the wash multiple times and, you know, they're for wet people, I suppose. Um, is it really okay to use vinyl? Um, marine vinyl is designed for being outdoors and being in uh, wet situations. Otherwise, marine would not be in the name. Um, so it is perfectly fine to go ahead and use marine vinyl. If you want to use a different kind of vinyl other than marine, you want to test its um, stability in the wash before you commit to it on a project. So um, if you have the ability to do like a tester, you can take like a scrap and uh, throw it in water and see how that works out for you. We know that marine vinyl isn't going to shrink like um, some other materials will. So it's perfectly safe to use with these towel toppers. And to be honest, I am not, I'm still fairly new person to doing these. So there are uh, lots of people within our group who make these and sell them at shows and high volumes of them. So um, as a beginner, and you might also be a beginner when you're going through and doing these, um, I have thought that it would be helpful from a beginner's perspective on things that you kind of need to, to look at and do when you are working on these. And of course, as we all get better at doing these, practice makes perfect. And eventually, I will get faster at this because, you know, time is money. And for the home stretch. Now, see, this is a situation where I would have a really hard time getting in there with my big scissors. In fact, I am going to go ahead and try to cut it from this side since I have a little bit more room and not bumping up against my my hoop here. And so for uh, our, our dad joke of the video, or maybe I'll do a couple of them. Um, why was the spaceship not able to park on the moon? 
because it was full. Yeah, I know that one was bad, wasn't it? All right, so now we are trimmed out. And I just want to just make sure that I have got all of the little edges that I possibly can. There's one right. It's hard to see with the white on white. Um, there's a, a tiny bit of extra there that I can probably clean up a little bit more. Or maybe it was just a reflection of the WSS. But I got really close. And if you can't get this close, that's okay too. Just get as close as you possibly can. Vinyl isn't as forgiving as um, cotton is or other materials. I have actually, um, I was doing something with a fuzzy face. Uh, the last towel that I did, towel topper that I did. And um, I actually used a washcloth as the applique material. And for that one, I had to put a topper not only against the main hand towel, but also across the top of the, of the face of the design I was doing because I used the washcloth and it too was loopy. So um, if you do something like that, just have an extra piece of WSS available. But it turned out really cute, and um, anytime there's a fuzzy face thing, I think that's what I'm going to do. All right, so now I am all cut out and trimmed around. Oops, sorry. I am going to go ahead and stitch out the rest of the design, which is the shading uh, around the face and on the hat, the black, which is the eyes, the white, which is the name on the hat band and then the black will the final black will do the whole outline and I will be right back okay how cute is this look at him he's just adorable so now we can go ahead and start taking off all of the tapey tape and pull off the WSS which I didn't mean to do all in the same step, but okay. And here comes the WSS. Got a little bit more down here at the bottom. And then a little bit more here. And we'll take out these pins. And pop it out of the hoop. Maybe. Push that hoop over there. Um, I do have a little bit of cleanup work here, so I am going to do that and I will be right back. So now I'm gonna show you how to do my creative little, little hack that um, we purposely use the tearaway next to the cherry cloth um, in between the cutaway so that you can easily cut around your stabilizer. So to get things started, I'm just gonna flip that cutaway stabilizer up and insert my duck bills in between the tearaway stabilizer and the cutaway stabilizer. And I'm doing this so that my scissors don't catch on the loops on the terry. So I'm just gonna work my way through and some might say well Chris why don't you just use the duck bill on the terry cloth side uh, so that you don't catch it because you can catch it so easily with the pointy side why don't you just use the duck bill side well Chris isn't that coordinated so Chris doesn't do it that way um, and I just thought this was an, an easier way to get through and do this oops There is a section where I obviously just barely missed the tear away, but I can be careful with that as well. And here we go.
doesn't want to slide right here. There. And that will go over in my big box of stabilizer. I want to clean this up in here. And now we can go ahead and tear away the tear away, which is fun to say. And get that all out of there. And so that looks all nice and neat. Um, I did trim off already some of the uh, threads that were sticking up. That made it look super messy. It's still a little bit messy on the back, um, but it it looks fine now. Um, so when you are constructing your hooded towel, this is going to show because this isn't uh, lined or anything. And there's not a um, a piece of fabric or something over the back. I'm sure if you wanted to before stitching the final satin stitch. You could um, put a piece of non-fraying fabric like Olifun or something like that. I've not done that. Um, this is the only way that I've, I've done, finished the back of them. Um, part of the problem with doing that is it would only cover the satin stitch, which is the final stitch. Um, it may not cover this part. And you wouldn't want to use a woven type of fabric because that, once you... <clears throat> do the satin stitch at the end, um, you'd have to cut around it and then it would fray. So um, there is our design. Awfully cute, isn't he? And I am going to go ahead and get the sewing machine set up because this is finished on the sewing machine. Before we go over to the sewing machine, you'll notice that I have not cut the towel down yet. Um, Part of that is I think it's just easier to go ahead and stitch it while it's whole. Why bother going ahead and cutting it beforehand if you can still cut it after? Um, another reason is you can also decide on how big you want the hood to be. Um, <clears throat> this hood, this, I'm sorry, this hand towel is uh, 16 inches wide. And if I want a smaller hood, I could cut it a little bit closer. If I want a bigger hood, I can cut it... A little bit bigger so what I'm going to do is I am going to cut it at about about 10 inches wide and I'm doubling it because wherever we cut it is going to be our sewing line for for the uh, the hood I just want to make sure that I cut it the same on both sides my little marshmallow man isn't laying very flat. There we go. So I am going to line this up. Because we're going to do French seams, to close up this hood, um, we need to have a little bit extra on here because we're going to be doing one seam on the outside, turning it inside out, and then enc encasing the raw edges from the towel inside the second seam. So um, we wanna make sure that we leave enough between the design and the edge of the towel to do that. Um, so I am going to do it, cut it at about 10 inches. And my rotary cutter needs a new blade, so I'm just gonna cut it with scissors. Make sure that I am Hey, that wasn't too bad, was it? We're at a good 10 inches. All right. The next step is going to be done on the sewing machine. So let me get this all set up over there and um, I'll be right back. 
Okay, one other thing I'm gonna do before I get started uh, working on the hoodie is I am going to go ahead and cut off uh, this bottom band. That gets to be a lot of layers to sew through when you're adding it to the towel and you end up getting a big knob um, and try to forcing that underneath your presser foot is really ridiculously hard. So I am gonna go ahead and cut that off right at its seam. On both ends. Okay, so that is done. And we, this is the end that we will end up attaching to the bath towel when we get there. Now my thread, while I'm sewing the hoodie, the hood part of it, I wanna make sure that both my bobbin and my top thread match whatever color the hood is, the hood towel is. Because what's gonna happen is you're gonna sew a seam here and both sides, bobbin and, and top are gonna to show. And then you're gonna turn it inside out um, where they get hidden again, but then the top part will show. So you wanna make sure that your um, thread colors match. If you are using a different colored towel for the, the bath towel part of it, um, you can go ahead and change the top thread to match your bath towel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start off about a quarter of an inch, maybe uh, a little bit smaller, a scant quarter inch as they call it. And I'm going to stitch forward a little bit and then back stitch. And now, sorry. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and zip it all the way through. And back stitch at the top. All right, so now we have that stitched. And I'm gonna just go kind of close to the, to the seam. I'm gonna cut it just a little bit closer. Some people like to wait until uh, to cut their towel until after they've sewn this seam. That works fine too, if that's what you feel most comfortable at. Uh, just make sure that when you are stitching the seam that you are a consistent uh, uh, seam allowance away. So like if you have a uh, ruler on your sewing machine, you can use that as your guide because you won't be able to see your uh, seam allowance guides that are next to the needle. All right, so now we've got <clears throat> we've got the first part of our French seam done. We're going to go ahead and flip the hoodie inside out and poke our little pointy edge out. And just kind of roll that seam so that it all sticks out fine and we can bury those raw edges in there. And I'm actually going to kind of smooth it as I go. Feel feel where the raw edge is in because you can feel when you have it folded like that, you can feel where they are. So I'm just gonna kind of feel it as I go through the process. And again, my needle came unthreaded, does that quite often. This is still a machine that I'm getting used to. Um, I haven't had an industrial machine before. You don't need an industrial machine to do this. Just pointing that out. Um, it happened to be available. So I went ahead and used it for this project. Um, but you can use a regular sewing machine for it. All right. So I can feel where the ends of my, uh, the edges of my raw ed 
edge are for the towel. I'm going to go ahead and pop it on there. And I'm probably going to do about three eighths of an inch uh, seam allowance. And I'm going to go kind of slow while I'm going doing this so that I can make sure that I keep all of those raw edges inside my seam allowance. And I'm going to go forward and back and forward again. Stop, reposition, get these guys going again. Reposition. I'm sorry if my hand is in the way. I didn't have a better camera angle. Decides he's gonna hide again. There. All right. So now we have our French seam. So if you look at it from this side, there are no raw edges here, and there are no raw edges when you turn it right side out. Ta-da! All right. So. Our hood is done, and I will tell you that this particular towel that I used uh, was uh, just a, a very basic towel. It wasn't super expensive, a um, few dollars at Walmart, dollar, dollar and a half at Walmart. Um, but if you wanted to do um, a thicker, more absorbent towel, um, you probably will need to use a different type of seam, a different width of seam allowance because the thicker the towel is, the further in you might have to go. So that second French seam uh, may end up being a half an inch for you or something like that. Um, because this is a thinner towel, it's easier to do a smaller seam allowance for your French seam. So now we've got the hood part done and we need to add it to our bath towel. So I'm gonna grab the bath towel and change my thread color for the top because I am gonna use a blue bath towel. And I'm keeping the bobbin thread white um, because the we're gonna be stitching uh, the bobbin against the white of the, of the hood. So let me move that out of the way. So on the big towel, I am going to find the center, which is right there, and I am going to put a pin there. Maybe, if it lets me. There we go. All right. Now I have, I put the pin in on the right side of the towel. You can tell the right side on a towel because this um, finished edge is turned over and stitched down, um, but the, the it's not on this side. So this is going to be our center. And when we put the hood on, when we pin the hood on, our French seam is gonna go right up against the center of the of the bath towel and I'm just going to sorry you can't see but I'm going to go ahead and pin along the edge here and one more pin that guy over here. So now we've got our, our hoodie, our hood, pinned completely to the towel with right sides together. Um, when we go through and stitch this, we're going to use um, 
about a half inch seam allowance. You don't have to use a half inch, but about a half an inch is good. Um, because once we cut it, uh, once we stitch the seam, we're going to cut the hoodie on the right side of the seam and fold up the, the bath towel. You'll see what I mean in just a second. So I am going to start right there. Needle down. Go a few stitches on and then back stitch and off we go. All right. All right, back stitch at the at either end. So, now that we've got it stitched, we can't see the white on the back there, but it's there. Um and the blue is there, and we can go ahead and trim close to that new seam allowance. Make sure that you're pushing the bath towel down so you don't catch it in your scissors. You got there, Bucky. Bucky Barnes, the wind purse soldier, is right over there. And he is chasing a stranded piece of fabric. As long as that's all he does, that's cool. I'm cool with that. Yesterday I had to get him off of my serger. <laughs> because he was trying to eat threads on my serger. And we all know what threads do to the intestines of a cat. There. All right, so now you see that we've cut it really close to the uh, seam where we attach the hoodie to the bath towel. Now what we're gonna do is move our hoodie to the inside of the sewing machine. And I apologize, I keep bumping, bumping that. And then we're going to take this seam allowance on the bath towel and flip it over. And so it hides that raw edge of the seam. And we're gonna just stitch it down um, from end to end, just like that. Down, front, and back, and off we go. And I'm just going to maneuver it as I go. It's going to get a little bit tough when we get here to where the French seam is. Um, I may, in fact, I'll do that now. I'm going to cut that French seam down a little bit more. There we go. And we're almost done. In the home stretch. Ta-da! We have now completed attaching the hood to the towel and I'm just inspecting my seam to make sure that every part of the bath towel got stitched down. So you can see it looks really nice along that edge. And then when you turn it over, you don't see any raw edges. And because I used white thread in the bobbin, you can't really see the thread. You have a couple little stray threads to clean up 
but ta-da! One hooded towel at your service. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, here are a couple of uh, towels that I did earlier, and um, these are how they're, I've rolled them. And some are going to be, depending on the type of towel you use, this is a very thin, uh, not very plush towel, so it's much smaller. Um, and you can kind of stand them up. I was able to tuck the hood around it so it kind of stays self-contained. Um, put that one over there. This one was a little bit of a thicker towel. So um, I tied a ribbon around it to get it to stay before I tucked the, the hood down on it. There. And so now I'm gonna show you what I do when I am uh, rolling a towel like that. You can use whatever method works best for you. Um, and I'm sure some of those uh, people in the group who already do these on a regular basis um, have a way that they usually do it. Um, but here is mine. So this is kind of like that medium weight towel. And um, because this is the same towel that I used for uh, this blue one right there, um, except it doesn't have the decorative ends on it. So what I did is I just folded it in thirds, uh, lay it out, folded it in thirds, and then fold it up again, up to where the hood is and just kind of straighten it out, flatten it out. Okay. And then starting at one end, I know you can't see me while I'm over here on this end, but I am just going to roll the towel like this until I get to the center ish. Stay there, maybe. And then I'm going to do the same on the other end. I am not a professional towel roller. So let's see how this goes, right? And it got a little off track there. So let me just re roll that with an even along the bottom, like I like. Same thing here. Oops. And now you've got a nice little Swiss roll here. And you pull your towel out. And you can kind of maneuver your sides of the towel, of the hood, down a little bit. Down a little bit. And work it on the back too. There you go. It's a little wonky at the moment. And I'm not quite sure that I'd be able to get this to stay rolled like this um, for very long. So I am going to put a ribbon around it like I did for that one. i just use my ribby ribbon. And the rest of the roll is now on the floor. All right. So I'm just going to tie that. Even. And there you go. There it is little marshmallow man peeker all ready to go okay it still looks a little wonky i have to work on that work it out a little bit more here we go
And it's a nice, cute little gift for someone who really, really likes Ghostbusters. Our little marshmallow man. Thank you for watching.